when I converted to Islam, the BBC started calling me the former journalist Yvonne Ridley. When I first set out as a journalist in the 1970s, uh, it was a very male-dominated arena and it, uh, women were uh, frowned upon by certain sections of the industry and I, um, so I, I did have to counter that and I felt as though I had to work twice as hard as anybody else just to get the same recognition. And it was, uh, it was quite, quite tough. When I converted to Islam, the BBC started calling me the former journalist Yvonne Ridley. And I had many battles with them to say I am still a journalist and uh, I'm still working as a journalist. But there is this perception of, um, of Muslim women. And so I began to face a new discrimination. But I also faced a discrimination from within as well. Um, because there are some Muslim men who are part of the patriarchal system. And I came across this um, when I was, I think it was Kenya, and I wanted to interview uh, Kofi Annan. And there were about 30, 40 journalists uh, there. And when he walked into the room, uh, they just surged forward. And I was um, shocked because I was nearly trampled on uh, by the predominantly male journalists there. And, uh, you know, once I sort of regained my composure, I had to dive in and use my elbows which shocked them um, because I wasn't going to stand at the back. I wanted to get the story. I wanted to hear what was going on. I generally think people who threaten never ever do. Um, and it's the people who don't threaten who sit there silently <laughs> simmering that you should be more worried about. Um, but I, I do remember um, a few years ago receiving a phone call at about three o'clock in the morning. And it, this man said, I know who you are and I know where you live. And I said, great, well, come on round because I'm waiting for you. And, uh, and, and the line went dead. I don't have time to look over my shoulder because somebody is threatening me. I don't have time. I remember speaking at a rally in um, Florida and I had received specific death threats before the rally. And these uh, police came and advised us not uh, to go ahead because they feared for my safety and I said that I was still going to speak and they said well will you wear a bulletproof vest and um, I said no I I would look ridiculous and uh, so I, um, I wouldn't wear a bulletproof vest and so they said well we will sit in the audience and so if anything happens, at least you know that we are in the audience. And I gave my speak, speech and I told my journey to, spoke about my journey to Islam. And at the end of it, one of the police officers came to me and he said, can I have a copy of the Quran? 
And I said, you wanted to read it? And he said, I have to. He said, you know, I, I want to know more about this amazing religion. And there was somebody who would not have been in the audience ordinarily, who was. The message resonated with him and he wanted to read more. So, you know, that was a good result. So I always think, you know, um, there's a great saying, I don't know who's, who thought of it, but if someone throws lemons at you, make lemonade. 